My name is Ivan Vantajato. In the industry, I go by the crypto servers. Do we have any serpents in the house tonight? Yeah, I see you. I see you. I see you. It is such a pleasure to be the host of this incredible panel. Please give them a round of applause. This is a fantastic panel this afternoon. We're going to kick things off by allowing them to introduce themselves and then I got some questions for them. Oh, have I got some questions for them. And it's going to be a really, really fascinating topic that we're going to be discussing today because Web3 Gaming is going to really, really revolutionize how we play games. So without further ado, let's kick things off. Hello, hello, hello. Excited for the heat that you're going to bring, Ivan. Um, my name's John Stephanidis. I am the co-founder and CEO of Balthazar DAO. Um, our vision at Balthazar DAO is about revolutionizing the gaming industry and creating a more equitable gaming space and ultimately creating a self-sustaining wealth building ecosystem through decentralized asset ownership. Um, and we do that through building both infrastructure blockchain experiences and end user facing blockchain experiences such as games, that are heavily focused on financialization. So we like to lean into the reason why we believe a lot of people are here, um, and that's the fact that you can make money through gaming, which I think is really cool. Um, and we, bu we build products to allow you guys to do that uh, sustainably, so. Thank you, John, great to have you here. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we've got a big uh, panel here. My name's Fred Shibesta. I, I guess I'm a crypto advocate, um, explorer, flaneur. Um, Farmer, um, I've been um, in crypto for quite a while, built a few businesses, um, Finder is obviously one, and um, yeah, working to just keep building the crypto space, and I'm very passionate about NFT gaming as well. Great to have you, Fred. So I'm Jack Economos, I'm co-founder and CEO of Matrix Studios. Um, we're building a gaming platform that will focus on the fostering of uh, independent developers in Australia and internationally. So, yeah, we'll be, we'll be uh, working with indie developers to roll out indie games. Great to have you, Jack. All right, good day, everyone. My name's Jace Falkenberg, and I'm the Chief Gaming Officer for TCG World. We're building a fully immersive open world. Um, it's going to be blockchain-based. We've got our own NFTs. Uh, well, basically, any, any item in-game is an NFT, like your vehicles, dragons. Uh, what we want to do is build a really fun, you know, um, experience for the user when they jump in. Almost like, you know, playing your, your big Fortnite sort of games or GTAs, but with the blockchain Web3 based behind it. Uh, and it's all about ownership. You know, uh, users will be able to actually physically own their items in-game, then on-sell them onto the secondary market, which we'll probably talk about a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, it's a very exciting space to be in, and I can definitely uh, hear the bulls running, so. Fantastic, thanks so much, Jason. So without further ado, I wanna kick things off with the basics. I think it's really important for everybody here to hear from you guys, how, what are the basics of NFTs? Like, how do they relate to games? For me, you know, how is it valuable to people? Because that's ultimately what it's all about. Why are games important? And why should somebody play a game that has put NFT technology, Web3 technology into it? And I'm going to kick things off with John. Yeah, I think it's a reason, you know, while we're all here, and I think it's about digital property rights. So when you look at the traditional gaming space, Game developers sell skins, um, they sell packs. You look at FIFA, they sell packs. And they own all of the intellectual property that they're selling to you. So you look at FIFA, for example, you spend a thousand bucks on your ultimate team game. You know, you, you, you got the best team. You might do all right that season, next season comes, you get to spend it again. There's no transfer of ownership across seasons and they, they can control that intellectual property as they like. So the idea of NFTs in games is transferring that intellectual property from the game to the gamer. And the way people can benefit from that is through the accrual of value. So we see value accrue in these games, even in the, in the centralized way, right? You look at like Counter-Strike, you know, AK-47 skins selling for 100 grand, 200 grand. Um, ironically, you know, still their intellectual property. So we know that people's experience in games is very intense 
and, and p people play games for many reasons, whether it's escapism or it's entertainment or it's to socialize. Um, so ultimately, you can do all of that and retain the intellectual property and trade it freely, um, keep it in your wallet, let it accrue value over time. Um, and eventually, you know, with, not to get too deep into like interoperability, but uh, you can potentially play that in another game. So the game asset sits beyond the game vessel or the game itself. So it, there's a lot of value. There's an incredible amount of value uh, for, the, for the gamer. And yeah, I'll leave it there for now. Yeah, so I think um, just so everyone, like a really 101, um, when you have an NFT game, you buy an NFT. So you go to OpenSea, you go to Blur, and you buy this token, just like um, you buy any other token. And then you take that and you put it in your wallet, and then you're allowed to play the game. So it's much like instead of buying, you know, when you buy a normal game, you register and you pay a fee, and then you go and play the game. The difference, like what John was talking about there, is now you own part of the game. And that has a value, and you can trade that. And so, you know, I think it's really important to consider that idea, right? Decentralization of the ownership of games is what I think is a brilliant use case of crypto, and I'm a big advocate about, and I think it's going to really continue to, to do really well. Another reason why I think it works really well is that if you think about any game, um, you have tokens in it, like you have points, you have currencies, and in the exact same way, you have a digital currency in a game. Um, and there's many games that have this. You know, Warcraft had gold. Um, Diablo has gold. But imagine instead that that actual gold or currency was a digital token. And so now you've got another real beautiful use case that sort of matches very really nicely. Um, and that's why you're seeing this real Cambrian explosion of new games. And I think the two things meet beautifully together. Um, I think fundamentally the reason why people play is for entertainment. Um, I think the reason why people play, like crypto people play um, games is for making money, <laughs> being straight. I think there's a game of financialization, right, that sits on top of crypto. And we all play it, right? You know, we buy it at one price and we sell it at another. And you're the one that got in low and you got out really high and you did really well. And then there's the one that you bought high and you lost and you tell everyone about it as well, right? There's a, there's a DJ in all of us, including myself. Um, and I think that game is alive and well in crypto and it's particularly potent in crypto gaming. Um, there's a lot of opportunity and it's a different kind of market, right? You don't go to a, a normal centralized exchange, you tend to go to a decentralized exchange. So you go to OpenSea, you go to Blur, and that's where you play this game of crypto, um, which I think is happening right now. I think for us, it's more... Uh, in context of building a gaming platform, it's more to do with the verifiability of the user base. So the technology behind the NFTs will be used to actually verify the independent developers that are onboarded onto our platform, uh, just for security and to be able to vet them as well. On the front end, the user experience, it'll allow people to have that sort of VIP experience uh, within the community that we're trying to build. Um, yeah, so that's, that's from our perspective. All right, from uh, TCG World's perspective, I guess uh, authenticity is a huge one. Uh, we want to really focus on, you know, the beauty about NFTs, and I, I like to call them digital collectibles, because when you're trying to focus on a gaming community, you also want to talk in their lingo. Talking NFTs, catchphrases like that, they can get a little bit put off. Um, but with TCG World, you know, obviously every, every, every item in the game is an NFT and it's about ownership and authentic, authenticity, I love that word. Um, so yeah, uh, w talking about authenticity, I'll give you an example. I, I was a Twitch uh, streamer for a couple years playing uh, Fortnite actually and obviously spent thousands and thousands of dollars on in-game items, a lot of money. Um, but what can you do with those, you know, in-game items? They're pretty much useless. Um, it's good for showing off with your friends and all that sort of stuff, but you can't do anything else with it. Uh, so that was quite frustrating in itself. But the other one was uh, a lot of bugs. You know, you're looking at a centralised server and centralised control by these gaming companies that basically own your items. You've got no, no control over it. Um, but then there's a lot of bugs that occur and all of a sudden you get these duplication bugs, you know, and 
people that, you know, are really low levels have these god rolled, you know, weapons and all that sort of stuff that could have taken someone, you know, six months to get to that sort of level. Um, so not knowing if the person had, like, is walking around with a skin or something like that actually owns, like, purchased it. You know, this is where NFTs and blockchain technology comes into it, where, you know, you know that that person, if they have that item in game, they've either purchased it off of the secondary market or got it legitimately because there is no duplication bugs. You can't duplicate the blockchain. So, you know, that, that uh, decentralized freedom uh, that a lot of companies like myself uh, from TCG World are trying to build with the metaverse, integrating blockchain technology, I believe is the future. So, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. So, Jack, I'm going to kick off with you on this one. So, what challenges do some game developers need to consider when they're going to be moving from Web 2 to Web 3? I think the answer to that would be the whether they're prepared or have the resources to create the actual in-game economy, whether they have the people around them to actually help them set that up, uh, and, of course, the funding to do so. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think um, I, I actually have this thesis about Web 2 games coming into Web 3. And I think there's a lot of hype. Like you see like Nickelodeon launch, Simpsons just did this recently. You get a lot of hype, right? A lot of attention. And so you get a lot of price impact on that. But I actually think that Web 2 games and Web 3 games um, have just the biggest, same amount of challenge about entertaining people. It's almost impossible. Like building a hit game is like winning the lotto. It is, there's very, very few of them. There are billions of dollars of uh, money going into this. There are huge studios, and the chance of building a AAA game is very, very low. Um, instead, what I think is that crypto um, has a very couple of unique aspects that need to be leveraged. And what they need to think about is, what do we have in crypto that's really, really good? We're instantly liquid. Like, everyone knows it, right? We all know you can buy and sell, and it's permissionless, right? No one can stop us buying or selling, which is freaking awesome, right? And then I think that the other part is what they're really scared about and what really challenge is they're not, uh, not comfortable decentralizing. Um, I, I reject the notion that there should be a monopoly on game assets, and instead, we should own the game assets, right? We should be the ones that can own them, and also, we should own and control part of the game itself. And that's what we're really good at at crypto. And embracing that financialization is really hard, really difficult for normal Web2 game companies. The, the other part that I think, I, I'll give you an example of this, right? Imagine a world where we controlled and sold like uh, Counter-Strike skins. Like we, had, we all had, we had the ability to be a marketplace and sell them in the game. The game developer made the game, right? It put the code out there. And we got the chance to be that marketplace, to be a dealer in the game. That is an example where crypto would do really, really well, right? Where, where we get to participate, be the community that builds these games and, and, and own part of that and drive that. That's a unique aspect about crypto, right? That's what they need to adopt to. And I don't think that's happening. Instead, they're coming in and saying, hey, we're going to beat, 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 like, we're going we're gonna to raise all this money. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and do graphics and we're going to try and win on that. Or gameplay, we're going to try and win on that. There are like studios all around the world with tens of thousands of brilliant developers competing to do that. That's not where crypto gaming needs to compete. We need to have a new thing and a different model. Yeah, I think you, there's not too much to add to that. Um, yeah. I'll, keep it, I'll keep it short. Uh, I feel like getting up and join the war, join the war. Um, no, I think building, building a game is, is difficult, right? As, as, as the guys know. Um, and, you know, and like Fred was saying, the majority of games that are spun up are thrown in the bin anyway. So imagine trying to build a game and then, as Jack was saying, trying to bring a balanced economy on top of that. It's very, very difficult. And... We haven't even freaking balanced our own economy in, in, you know, in real life, right? So how are you going to easily spin this up within a 12-month period once you've raised money? And like the ex I think a lot of it's around expectations. So I think just going back to the question, the challenges are around uh, setting expectations for, for investors. And I yeah. think that claiming 
triple A in the crypto space right now is almost impossible. I haven't seen it executed at all, right? Uh, yeah. I think there's maybe, maybe parallel TCG is the closest, um, but very, very difficult. So I think as Fred was saying, let's focus, and this is not the question, but this is just yeah, also yeah. my belief. Uh, let's focus on what's good in crypto, and that is the ease of financialization, which you just simply cannot do in Web2. So let's play to our strong points. Don't, don't, don't compete on graphics, don't compete on gameplay. Yeah, yeah I don't. can see. I can see Jack uh, as no. Fred was speaking. You really, you really want to quickly get in, Jason. I will get back to you. Uh, but Jack, I was just going to. Yeah, I was just going to build on what Fred was saying with regard to, um, you know, Web three in game assets. Surely the the Web three aspect needs to extend beyond just the ownership and management of these assets. Um, you know, I, one could argue that Web Web three gaming has been around for more than a decade, if that's all it is, because as you mentioned, Counter Strike. Uh, global offensive. I think the world record skin sale for that was 400,000 US and I'm pretty sure that person did not give one shit about the centralization of that asset when they were making that sale. But um, look, nevertheless, I think it should extend beyond just the sale of in-game assets. I think it should extend also to uh, governance, so the community voting, uh, which we're going to be employing on our platform giving people the right to vote on upcoming fun games. So Web3 games can be fun, I've been told. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's going to be our focus. Yeah. I see. Jay, Jay, you've had to wait a little while. Come on, let's hear no, your that, thoughts. That's all right. I've got all the time in the world. I think uh, for TCG World, simplicity. You know, um, we're, ta we're targeting the gamers. We need it to be simple to understand. Right now, it is quite complex. Um, and that's what we're working to sort of resolve because a lot of people that come into TCG World initially, oh, you've got to go download this wallet, you know, um, go to this website and then grab this NFT. But once our full world launches, we're going to have an in-game wallet that will be basically uh, created as soon as you log in, uh, just using your uh, email. So without even knowing, you'll have your own decentralised wallet inbuilt into the game which will also mean that the currency will be in-game as well. So you just use your credit card and purchase like you would any other game. And that simplicity is what is going to drive the next you know, um, future of gaming, really. Uh, and all it's going to take is one AAA game, uh, you know, a big one, to come out and, uh, and, and do exactly that. And people probably wouldn't even realise that they're playing in a blockchain game. So, uh, I, just, I was going to jump here because I reject that completely. I think it's got nothing to do with gameplay. It's got nothing to do with graphics. It's got nothing to do with any of that stuff. That's Web 2. Web 3 is... I'll tell you what Web 3 games are. You play, has anyone, got, anyone played Rollbit? And there's like a roller coaster? Literally, there's a line that goes up and a line that goes down, and you bet whether it goes up or down. That's the gameplay. And it's got billions of dollars going through it. You can't tell me that's got anything to do with graphics or anything like that. I, re I just have no... I just don't think we should hold out for a AAA game. Instead, let's lever in to what Web3 is great at. You don't need permission to play Rollbit. You don't need permission to bet on the line. You can just go True. and do it. That's what Web3 gaming is all about. So now... Now we've gone on to, off to a really, really interesting topic, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so then, as an investor... And I'm going to kick off with Fred on this one. So as an investor, where do you begin to put a value on a game which has now decided that it is going to tackle Web3, blockchain, it's going to create an economy? You know, you guys as a, as a platform, like, I want to know where do investors start and what are the key factors that they need to look out for when investing in this space? Okay, so... Um I just want to, again, this is going to be very controversial, but I apologize in advance. So, but, but please see it as, like, I'm here to, like, for, for, for a, this is my opinion, and obviously you should do your own research, but I think if you dig further into Web3, you'll start to see these things, right, emerge. So I think fundamentally, if you're an investor, if you're looking to compete, like, if you see a game, right, or you see... Uh, um, something that's happening and it's just a big brand and they're professing to go and build a really slick game, you should watch out because 
That literally is, if you go to Steam, one of those comes up every hour. That's yeah. like the chances of competing against that is very, very, very hard. Instead, this is what you want to try and look for, right? Have a look in, uh, in the Discord and the Twitter and have a think when you can. This is really, really hard to do, but I'm just going to share this. Think about the natural behaviors of what crypto people do. What do they like to do? We love to speculate, right? That's what we do. And if there are people who are prepared to speculate on something in that game, if it has a cracky mechanic, I call it cracky, then, then I think it's going to go quite well, right? You want to look for the mechanic that replicates the behavior of crypto people. What is the behavior that crypto people like to do? They like to buy and then they like to sell. If it, that's baked into it, that's a good thing. Number two, go and get a bunch of people, look at the team, and if they're crypto people, they've done something before, that's a great sign, right? I tell you, I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm, this is going to be really controversial, but if anybody, everyone's heard of Star Atlas, right? What's come out of Star Atlas? A bunch of NFTs and a brilliant trailer. That's it. And maybe a small game. And I'll tell you why, because the guy that's running it is a film studio guy. That's who's running it, right? So you're gonna get a great trailer and everyone's getting hyped about it, but what's the reality? You're not gonna get a crypto game. Crypto games are like, they got baked in Ponzi's. I shouldn't say that out loud, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> do your own research on that. No financial advice, but let's be straight, right? Like, they got baked in Ponzi's and they're fun. That's what makes it fun. It goes up, and then it goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down, and we have fun doing that. And I think that's the step, that's the leap we need to make, and I think that's, what, that's the change in, in what I believe, uh, I guess, you know, as an investor, I'm not saying go and invest in a Ponzi scheme, so to come back to your question, I'm trying to say, like, what's the mechanic that's going to get crypto people using this? And it's not about gameplay, and it's not about graphics, and it's not about, like, some fancy trailer. Brilliant. John? I just want to. I just want to jump in. Um, <laughs> all right. So, to Jace's point, right? I'm going to try and neutralize it a little bit. Oh, go for it, because I'm about to like jump in with something huge that I think would, you know, absolutely turn that on its head. But I won't go into right, it just right. yet. We'll go to that if, later. If you've got, if you've got two games side by side, and the games are of the exact same experience, and one has digital ownership in it and one does not. Over time, the one that has digital ownership will win because it is ultimately more value for the end user. I think the problem is that trying to get to that point requires hundreds of millions of dollars and like a five to six year period. And the crypto gaming craze really only started with Axie Infinity in 2021, 2020. So even the games that have raised three, 400 million in 2020 are still not there yet. So, aka Star Atlas, who have released a, a trailer and some NFTs. So, I think the issue is not, yeah, I think the issue is that we just don't believe it's there yet. But what's here now is the financialization component. Like, I honestly, again, do your own research, but you should definitely check out Rollbits roller coaster games. It's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going to have It's very, it. dude, it's very, you don't, actually don't do it. Just, just don't do it. Don't, don't do that. Yeah, couple of Do hours not later. check out roller coasters. <laughs> roll bit. Yeah. All right. So before we get to Jace, because I'm really looking forward to your answer, Jack, what are your yeah. thoughts on this topic? Look, my my answer was going to resonate with what Fred said, and my uh, initial instinct feeling would be to jump straight into the community and see what the vibe is within the Discord yeah. community. Uh, search for keywords like fun. Hopefully that comes up a few times. Hopefully people are having a good time in the in the community there. Also, of course, how long have the founders been around for? What stage? in the project are they at? Have they just had a massive token sale? Uh, have they just had a massive NFT sale? What have they done since? What's their go-to-market strategy? What is their marketing strategy moving forward? If it involves a billboard in New York, Times Square, run as fast as you can the other way. Over to you, Jace. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm scared. We, all, we all know Rockstar for years and years has been developing GTAs, and they are just mega hits, right? And there's so much speculation about GTA 6 uh, and, you know, what's involved. There's a lot of rumours, especially in the crypto world, about, you know, are they going to integrate blockchain technology? What if they do? What if they integrated NFTs and launched their own token? That would be insane because all of a sudden they've just 
gone from the back to the front when it comes to blockchain technology, right? A lot of the, um, the big AAA companies are holding off right now because they're not sure how their community is going to take it. If, if Rockstar came out and said, okay, we are integrating it, it's, it, that's it. Everyone would just jump on board and you'd see an absolute explosion uh, in the gaming industry when it comes to Web3. It's almost like, yeah. And that, that's why I get a little bit excited and look at it, even from an investor point of view, we're so early. You know, getting involved in, uh, you know, startups and stuff like that. It gives a good opportunity for indie game, game developers to uh, get into a market and, you know, compete against the, uh, the big fish. So. so, Jay, so you've brought up a big word, Grand Theft Auto. Yes. Who's familiar with Grand Here Theft Auto? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, right? <laughs> and I think what's really interesting now, and let's <clears throat> bring the Grand Theft Auto game into this particular question, yeah. is people here right now want to know, how do I make money? of this economy, this NFT economy that is built in with these games. So if a game like Grand Theft Auto next month is the rumor that a trailer is going to come out, and if they do come out, I completely agree with you. I do agree that if Grand Theft Auto come out, everyone else is just going to jump on board and quickly rush to get into this space. But if somebody right now in the audience is thinking, how do I make money off my NFT inside Grand Theft Auto or inside a game? How does that work? I want to know from your thoughts. Okay, from my, my point of view, uh, obviously you can own, you know, building, like your little apartments and all that sort of stuff on the online side, right? Um, but all your skins, weapons, vehicles and all that, you don't actually have ownership of it and you can't on-sell that. Uh, but if they were to integrate NFTs into an actual game, you'd be able to sell it on the uh, secondary market, real trade estate, it. Property, real estate. Well, property, everything. Yeah, so, and, and that's why I, 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 I've got a funny feeling they might be looking at it. You know, they, the only problem is they've been in development for like, what is it, 10 years yeah, or something like years. that? So when they first started, they might not have had that vision. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's all about ownership and tr being able to trade it, you know, and make money as well. Yep. Jack, your thoughts? There's, there's also, it's, it's, a, it's a brand new economy, so... There's going to be ample employment opportunity within the actual uh, platform. Um, yeah, think of all of the, the workforce that would be sort of available to, to people who traditionally, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, employed. I don't know. So, yeah, as well as real, real estate agents. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just going to open There's, up a can of worms, yeah, basically. I mean, as, as it is, uh, you know, modded GTA servers are already paying people to be a part of the community. Yeah. So it would only only ramp up from there. Yeah. Um, I could only imagine the legalities, though, of being uh, mugged in GTA 6. We'll, we'll cross that bridge, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge yeah. when we get there. Fred, your thoughts? I think um, like, GTA is a really nice name, and it's a good bit of hype, but I'd, like, I don't know, I'd, I'd uh, what is it? Buy the rumor and sell the news. Like, yeah. they're going to have to compete just like everyone else. It's, it's a good game. Yeah, 100%. It'll bring some, like, like legitimacy to it, right? I get it. Um, but Nike's had, had NFTs for ages. So has the NBA. Like, it didn't, it, it's, it's, it comes and goes. It's like a good bit of hype. And then, you know, everyone's seen that graph. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I think what I, like, I just want to talk about, if I can just maybe give it a different perspective. The guys that made Farmville, everyone remember Farmville? They made Sugartown. Check out Sugartown, right? Sugartown sold out in like an hour. That thing just nuked, right? The NFTs, they loved it. What's happening now is they have to go and build a game and that's going to take ages. Then they have to go and compete and get users. It's like, so that's, that's, the, that's the model. You know, I think the games I'd look at, I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple of things to look at. Check out Scores. Scores is literally a game of putting your ETH address in first on a Twitter. That's crazy. But everyone plays it. I think, I think what you know, John's doing with Wallet Wars, everyone should go and check out Wallet Wars. Wallet Wars is literally, I think, got it. They're on the edge. They're going to set the meta. They're going to make the game of games. I think what they're doing is very interesting. Um, I, think, I think Sugartown, Scores, and Wallet Wars, they would be the three things I would immediately go and check out. What about, your, what about yourself, John? I think, yeah, I think if the question is like, how can you make money through NFT gaming, I think you look at, like Fred saying, NFT value appreciation, and that's 
mostly done through, specula sp through speculation and through a strong community. So you're much better off supporting a team that has a really good marketing background, uh, ironically. Um, so that, that's, that's one part. The other is token emissions. So I think a lot of people like to shit on Axie, but I, I reckon what Axie did was absolutely tremendous. I don't know if there's an application in crypto that has brought more people into the space than Axie. And we talk about onboarding, right? Like we've been deep down the rabbit hole of onboarding, like built a wallet with biometrics and blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, if people realize that there is sufficient financialization in a game, they will jump through hoops. I don't know if any, has anyone here, did anyone here try and play Axie? Axie Infinity, anyone? Yeah, like, dude, you had to fund, if you're a new user, it's like you go from bank account into centralized exchange, centralized exchange into the first DeFi wallet, second DeFi wallet into the third DeFi wallet. Then you get to get it into the game itself. Like there were like four steps to just get to play the game. And why did, why did people do that? You can't sit there and tell me that Axie was worth the fun. It just wasn't. Like, it was just an all right game. It was a four out of 10 game, but good on them, right? They, they put an amazing economy in there and they nearly created a sustainable economy. They, they tried their best. They, they put uh, deflationary mechanisms in. It just wasn't enough. They just grew too quickly. It was unprecedented growth. And they're still the number one NFT collection in the crypto space by volume. They've got more volume than Bored Apes, CryptoPunks, everything. So that's really telling for me. That's probably the best data point we have on what actually works in the crypto space. It's about financial. I just think it's strongly about financialization and how, what does financialization look like? Token emissions, NFT growth. Um, but I think the winners, you know, obviously Fred gave, gave me a nice shill there with Wallet Wars. Um, I, th I think we're going to be a winner. Um, but I also think that uh, the winners will be the guys that are creative around sustaining the economies and taking things that we've seen in the Web2 space, little micro economies that we've seen work in the Web2 space and put, bring it into the Web3 space with a different skin on it. So, Fantastic, fantastic. I do have a very interesting question coming up and I'm really curious to see how each one of you interprets this. But so can Web3 games help level the playing field between your large gaming companies? And as Fred has mentioned, you know, he's not super convinced that, you know, your GTAs of the world with a huge reputation and huge a crowd can, you know, really, you know, drive adoption of, of Web3. But do the indie developers have a chance? You know, like, do they have a chance in this space to really disrupt the big, the big gaming organizations? And to what extent does AI going to have a role to play in that? I'm going to kick, kick, kick things off with Jack. So from my perspective, it's all about uh, the community building. I absolutely think yeah. that they can level the playing field. Like with our platform, for example, we will be putting a, a massive focus on building that um, hopefully cult-like following um, for, for the Glizzy gaming platform. Um, so I think absolutely, yeah, through the community. What about yourself, Jess? Well, from uh, my perspective with TCG World, we launched our token uh, and started selling land even before our game was launched um, because people could see the vision that we had. But that allowed us to survive the bear market, you know, through the funds that we got through our land sales. So I think a lot of indie developers with not much funds will be able to continue to fund their development uh, by building their community, uh, getting in some revenue from IPOs or ICOs or however um, they want to, you know, get their, um, their sales from. But I think that in that regard, it, it's levelling the playing field, I think. What about yourself, Fred? So I think um, indie games have a really unique chance in Web3 uh, to make a really interesting games that have financialization built into them. And what we've got is a really sticky community, right? So normal games, the way they work is they get like, they need, they have a sort of a power law, right? Where one to 2% of the actual players spend money. The rest don't. They're all, they've come there for free. They're like the carbuncles on the backside of our economies, right? And <laughs> they, they have fun, right? They get free fun. But like a bunch, there's only a very small portion that actually spend money. Whereas in Web3 games, what you've got is actually say five to 10,000 players and they're spending quite a bit of money, right? So you've got a different power law, a different equation. Now, what does that mean? Is that if these indie developers go and get a really tight community, you know, five, 10, 20,000 people who are hardcore dedicated, I think they can make it. They actually can. And I think Axie showed that, right? Axie yeah. 
Um, another one, Zed Run. The guys at Zed Run are amazing. There's a tight community still at Zed Run that race horses. And they're continuing to keep going. Photo Finish right now on Solana is doing great. These are the kind of things where you've got a small community, dedicated. They're there to, you know, financialize. And I think that's where you break through. And then I think the way you board into the rest of the market is, and here's my favorite collection, uh, I'm going to confess, is I, I love pudgy penguins. Uh, and I'll tell you why I love pudgy penguins. For all the NFT crew out here, they're a little penguin. That's it. And then some have a fish on their head. Um, and the reason why is that you can buy pudgy penguins in Walmart. And I bought a pudgy penguins in Walmart. I, went, I was just in New York and I bought pudgy penguins, right? The little dolls, they have literally crossed the chasm to the world of atoms. And these little, little penguins that are very cute, um, they come with the NFTs inside the box. And what does that mean? You have a gateway now to the rest of Web3, right? They are crossing the chasm. That is the level. You go from this tight community, you go, then you go out to Walmart, and you bring the Walmart people in, and we want more Walmart people into crypto. Brilliant. John? <clears throat> All right. So the question was about whether indie games can compete, right? Yes. All right. I reckon they can. And I'll tell you why. So I was in Paris in July, and I went and met the Ubisoft guys who, who were pretty good buddies with, went, went to their HQ, and we've been discussing working with them you know, for, for over a year um, in different ways. And they will not adopt crypto as part of their core products, full stop, because they just don't need to. Because right now, they're really comfortable where they are, right? And a lot of them are publicly listed and has all sorts of other implications as well. So I think... First and foremost, the, the current gaming giants just move really slowly and there's just not enough of a value proposition for them to do that. I think if you get really tight-knit communities with enough indie gaming studios heavily driven by financialization, because that's the only thing that's going to drive them in the short term, they will eventually build their, their, their treasuries and they will eventually invest in bigger games. And this is going to take a long time in my, in my opinion. Um, so like zooming back to what we were talking about earlier, I think that if you're, a, if you're raising as a AAA game, it's just, you're just, it's just not going to happen. It, like, like stay away from those, those projects, right? But for the smaller ones, I think they can build their treasury pools up, get better and better at building games, build a really tight-knit community. And across the board, people will start diverting their attention to these games. And the, the, the really hard part of competing with a AAA game on fun, okay, is that you're not just competing with games. Like people choose gaming over watching Netflix, over going to have coffee with their friends, over spending time with their partner, whatever you, you wanna do, right? Like it's a lot broader than just game versus game. So how do you cut through that? Little bit of cash, you know? Give, give you something, you know, a little bit of an incentive, a little bit of a lick. Uh, and I think that that's, that's gonna be the thing. So you, you do that, build a real tight knit community, and eventually, I think they will genuinely compete. But, yeah. Fantastic. Look, I think you've all been brilliant uh, on stage today. But in 90 seconds or less, and I'm going to start with Jace, everybody that's here today that has heard you guys, you know, even my mind right now, I have a different perspective, you know, on what the research I'm going to do moving forward. But in 90 seconds or less, guide the audience, where do they go from here? What are they going to do as soon as this finishes today? We're all going to have some lunch, but after lunch, how do we start to research based on the, all the knowledge that we've heard here today? 90 seconds or less. I'll start with you, Jace. Okay. Well, first of all, you've got to go to tcg.world <laughs> and come check us out. But uh, we do have a booth over there. Uh, we are showcasing our WebGL, so come check it out. Um, yeah, we also are working on the, uh, the full world, but you know we're keeping that under wraps just yet. Um, but I think... You know, e even just going on to OpenSea and, uh, and typing in gaming or looking for, um, you know, your, your blockchain sort of games. Um, yeah, just, just go around, have a chat to uh, any of the uh, exhibitors that are, you know, showcasing their, uh, their, their Web3 because that's what we're here for. So, yeah. Brilliant. Jack? I think a takeaway message from me would be that Web3 games um, and Web3 gaming probably um, 
yes, it's about investment, correct? Um, but it also can shift the focus back to the fun, uh, fun of gameplay and, and really resonating with the passion points of traditional gamers. Um, you know, um, eSports. eSports should have, you know, more of an impact, you know, within the blockchain gaming space. Perhaps there's, there's an avenue there, but that's the sort of uh, below-the-line sort of marketing strategy that these, these Web3 businesses can employ moving forward. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Fred? All right. Um, I'm going to just drop some crazy alpha moves, all right? So <laughs> if you want to make some money in crypto, let's, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. So obviously, this is not financial advice. But you want to get in real early. So you need to go and meet teams before they've launched, number one. If they've launched already, you're too late, normally. So you need to go into their Discord, and you need to go and offer some value in some way, shape, or form to use your skills to get involved and then get in early, and then you get an allocation, and off we go, right? That's being straight. The second thing is look for projects that have an NFT and are staking those NFTs, and you are earning points or tokens. That is the meta right now. That is the meta of NFT gaming. That is the meta of crypto right now. Look for those projects. So I think, you know, look at Grapes. I think it's really interesting. Look at Wallet Wars. Mm. Strongly look at Wallet Wars. They're doing some fantastic things. Um, there's another bunch. Um, there's a guy called Saint on Twitter. Check him out as well. I think his stuff's really good. Um, I think the last thing I'd like to say is, if you're going to get involved in NFT gaming, go and listen to the spaces. The spaces are where the teams talk, and they are really, really informative places, and you've got to take the time. They're like the podcasts, but you go and check, those, check the games out and listen to their spaces, and then see if they've got something really inventive and different that crypto people will love. Love it. John? Raw at Niage. Raw at Niage. Raw at Niage. Wallet Wars game. Raw at Niage. My brothers and sisters in coin. You're all down bad. You've gambled and you've lost. We have something. Sustainable financialization. Raw at Niage. Join the war. Join the movement. Wallet Wars game. Let's go. On that note, please, a round of applause for this amazing panel. Thank you all so very much. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks, we do mate. have a few moments available for some questions. Anybody in the room who wants to ask these am this amazing panel some questions today? Yes. I uh, yeah, uh, just wanted to ask, like with um, uh, Axie Infinity, uh, is it? Yeah. Uh, it did very well overseas, like in developing countries, and I heard it was really popular in like Philippines because people could make a good uh, amount of money for them out of it. I'm just wondering how much is that a factor for developing a game? Are you asking how much of a factor developing countries played in Axie Infinity? Uh, how, mu how much of a factor incorporating that in the roadmap? Um, look, it's of the roadmap, right? It, it, uh, the, the people in developing countries are the ones that are motivated to play the game. It, the, the economics are balanced through them. And, you know, uh, the demand from Axie Infinity in the Philippines changed their payments landscape. So, you know, at the time, what they had done was pro properly groundbreaking. Like, they changed, you know, global economics to a degree. Uh, so people could play a game and earn $20 a day or $10 a day instead of maybe doing something physical and earning half of that. That's for playing a game for three, four hours a day. So, uh, you know, for that original guild model, it's a huge part. Um, unfortunately, uh, that farming of games is not as prominent anymore just because it's also not good for the games themselves. But yeah, they are still a huge part, part of the ecosystem, massive. I think it's about uh, distribution of wealth as well. You know, uh, bringing the third world countries into the first world. You know, being able to like earn ten, twenty dollars off of a game, we might not think that's much in a day, but for them, that's like their whole day's wage. So I think you know, when you look at it in that perspective, it, there's a bright future in uh, NFT gaming. Fantastic. We've got one final question. <clears throat> um, I sort of have two questions. My first one is, um, which continent do you guys think will like lead the pathway for Web3 gaming, the the West or the East? Um, so the West being uh, Europe, US, Latin America, and then the East being Asia. 
Um, and my second question is, I feel like a common uh, misconception is that a lot of people think the Web3 games that are going to be big are like GTA on-chain, but in reality, I think that actually, I kind of agree with what Fred said about them being like simple, basic mechanics, something more like Candy Crush on-chain. So do you guys think it's going to be, uh, off the back of that, do you guys think it's going to be uh, mobile or desktop that's going to be the, the platform that onboards the most users into Web3 gaming? I might start. Um, so um, I think like like so so what's a benchmark game for me? I, like like the level I'm talking about is um, is anyone played Slither.io? Like the little snake you go around and you collect it. That's the game right now, and all the streamers are playing it in between their things. Right, it's super hot. Um, it's fun, but then you need a you need a financialization engine around it, right? And I think that's where the Web three side and the economists. Um, and there's a lot of brilliant game economists out there. Like, there's professional game economists. Um, and they're moving into the space, right? So coming up with those things. I think that's what's going to break through. I do think that it's mobile. Mobile's a big deal. It needs to be mobile friendly because... And, and I'm just going to answer your, your original question is... I don't think it's the West. I think it's the East. I don't know if... I don't know what exactly the East is exactly anymore. Or what... <laughs> but I mean, like, emerging markets. That's the way I see it. I think they have a fan, like an amazing opportunity... Um, to take risk, uh, and, and that, that risk is democratized, right? They have a chance to participate in something to change their life. You know, I, I think that's, a, that's, what, that's what actually showed us in one way, but there's all sorts of other ways that this is happening. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken to many, many people who just are very grateful for crypto. Uh, I'll just tell, share a short story if I can, and, and this is where my mind's at. Um, when I was in New York, I used to walk to the office at Finder, and on the way, there was a guy selling bus tickets, like touring, touring the bus, right? And, I, you know, he'd come up to me every day and I said, man, like I live down the street. Like you, you don't have to sell me. I'm not going to catch the bus. And, I, and then he said, oh, no worries, man. He pulled out his phone and he literally had KuCoin and he was trading. And I said, man, that's pretty hectic. Like you're like trading. He's like, he's like yeah, like this is going to get me out of here. You know, he's selling bus tickets in the freezing cold in New York City. It ain't pretty, right? And he's trying to get out. He's trying to have a chance. And I think, you know, these games, these very simple games with beautiful economies that are, that are built uh, and thought about deeply, that's what's going to change crypto. And I think that's what's going to be the next big bull run. And I don't think, I think it's the emerging markets. Fantastic. Well, what about your thoughts, Jack? I was just going to chime in and say that uh, right now, the biggest gaming market in the world is mobile gaming in Southeast Asia. It's absolutely huge and there's incredible daylight between the next. Um, I think as soon as we see the, the app stores and the, and the Google Play stores adopt the technology or allow the technology, I think that's where you'll see the biggest market. Brilliant. Thank you all so very much.